Welcome back. This is Rito here with another Terraria Calamity Endgame Weapon Showcase. Today we're going to be looking at the awesome Scourge of the Cosmos. This is a post Yaren Phase 1 weapon and it is amazing. It's the upgraded version of the Scourge of the Corruptor. And the Scourge of the Corruptor is the weapon that you find in the corruption chest in the dungeon. So here's the Scourge of the Corruptor's effect, and here is the Scourge of the Cosmos. You can see the projectiles are a lot larger, and they resemble the Devourer of Gods. So let's go try this out on a target dummy and see what type of damage it can do. I've got the melee variant of the Scourge of the Cosmos, and I have it rolled to Godly. And you can actually get a Rogue variant of this weapon as well, and that can be rolled to Unreal. But the Godly Scourge of the Cosmos, with everything I've got equipped currently, is 4,989 melee damage and 91% critical strike chance, very fast speed, insane knockback, and it says it throws a bouncing cosmic scourge that emits tiny homing cosmic scourges on death and tile hits. And one thing someone mentioned in a previous video is that the damage is actually higher if you're standing still with Auric Tesla, but if you're on a mount, it shows the damage that you'll have if you're moving. For my gear, I've got just a bunch of accessories that are end game, kind of just a mix of survivability damage and mobility. And everything is rolled to menacing, and then I do have a lot of the end game buffs applied. So now let's see what type of damage this can do. So we're getting like 90,000, 100,000, pretty powerful. I want to see how much damage it can do if we just shoot straight at the ground. So if we're missing our shots, we're still actually doing a lot of damage. We're still doing like 100,000, even 120,000 there. 170 I saw. So if you're in an enclosed arena, like with Supreme Calamitous or something like that, you can actually still do a lot of damage, even if you're missing. And you can see right here, the main projectile does not home. So it's best to use this if you have a fairly enclosed arena. And just for comparison, let's go ahead and try out the Scourge of the Corruptor and just see how much damage this can do. So it only can do, with all the gear we've got, like 3,500, 4,000 almost. There we go, 4,000. So you can see this is a lot better. And that's to be expected, of course, because this is way farther along in the game. Now let's try this out on some bosses. I kind of feel like fighting the Moon Lord. So let's see how it does. You can see it's doing really fast work on the Moon Lord. The main thing is just waiting for the eyes to open. And yeah, very quickly can defeat the Moon Lord. Obviously this weapon is much farther along in the game, but it's kind of fun to see how it does on earlier bosses. And we could try this out on Providence and see how it goes. It's doing pretty well. Hopefully we'll be able to kill it before it does its first attack. Yep, there we go, before it did its first beam. I really like how quickly these projectiles shoot, and the fact that they shoot in such a straight line makes it very easy to aim, because once when you start getting the hits on the boss, you can kind of just keep pace with the boss as it moves, and you can do really good damage. Now let's take a look at the crafting recipe, and then we can go try it on the Jungle Dragon Phase 2. So the recipe is pretty simple. As expected, you'll need the Scourge of the Corruptor, which requires a corruption key and finding the corruption chest in the dungeon. And in Calamity, there's actually an island. If you do like a Crimson World, there will be a corruption island. And so you can still get this item even if you're in a Crimson World. And then you need 10 Cosmolite Bars, which you can get from the Devourer of Gods. You'll also need 10 Dark Sun Fragments, which you can get from the Solar Eclipse after defeating Yarn Phase 1. And lastly, you need Xerox Pitchforks. And those can be crafted from meld bars, so that's pretty simple. And you can craft meld bars from ectoplasm, hallowed bars, and meld blobs, which you can acquire during the pillar event. And that's the recipe for the Scourge of the Cosmos. Pretty simple for such a powerful weapon. Now let's go ahead and put on Yarn Phase 2 gear, like Silva Armor for the melee class, and we can switch Elysian Tracers on for our Celestial Tracers, and everything else I think is good. This is all gear we would have when we fight Yarn originally. And let's head over and try it out and see how good it is. Okay, here we go. You see we're doing a consistent, like, 70,000 damage. And because our arena is enclosed, we can still do lots of damage even when we miss, which is very nice. 
We're going pretty fast during this phase one. And even if Yarn is invincible, you can still be shooting these because it's going to still be doing damage once when he comes back into his normal form. Those will all just home in and do a big damage spike. Okay, we're almost to phase two. Yep, we just got him to 10%, so he's going to heal up. Okay, we'll start shooting these down because it's going to start in a second. And we'll go with Adrenaline. And you saw right there, I was just shooting right into the ground while we were waiting for him to take damage because that could guarantee having lots of those homing particles right when he stops being immune to damage. Okay, this is getting pretty close. We've made a lot of silly mistakes here, but I think we'll still be fine. Just gotta keep moving. And we've almost got him. There we go. I don't think this was too much stronger than some of the other weapons I've tried at this phase of the game, but the homing aspect definitely is very handy, especially if you enclose your arena like this, which I would highly recommend doing if you're fighting Yaren with this weapon. Overall, for a rogue or a melee class, this is a really good option for Yaren phase 2. I've even seen people use this during the Supreme Calamitous fight. You can launch these during the fireball phase and get all of these bouncing around the arena, and that way, you know, right after the fireball phase, these can all home in on different targets, and you can do a little bit of extra damage before you switch back to something like the Exoblade or the Ark of the Cosmos. Overall, I think this is a really amazing weapon. The things I really like about it are the fast speed that you can shoot it at, the fact that it's not affected by gravity, and that it has those homing effects. And it's also a pretty easy crafting recipe, and I love that it's an upgrade to the iconic Scourge of the Corruptor, which I've had a lot of fun with over the years in Terraria. And that's it for the Scourge of the Cosmos. I hope you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. If you did, be sure to like and subscribe. I also post lots of other showcase videos and Let's Play videos. I'm currently doing a Rogue playthrough on Calamity Death Mode, and I just started that series, so be sure to check it out if you're interested. Thanks again for watching. And I'll see you next time.